For 13 years now, the World Cube Association has been the official source for speed cubing competitions and records. If you want your solves to be officially recognised by the WCA, you go to a competition sanctioned by them and they will go into the database, forever on display. But how did anyone keep track of the records beforehand, or organise competitions? The 15 or so years after the first ever World Championship in 1982 were bone dry. No competitions that are now officially recognised were organised, although a few unofficial competitions were held, and the world record stayed at 22.95 seconds by Min Tai. The good thing about this was that it wasn't exactly difficult to keep track of official records, as there was only one and the cubing scene was almost non-existent. Then, the Rubik's Games program was released in 1999. This was probably the spark that led to the new era of cubing, as it brought together dozens of people from around the world, like Ron Van Brueckham, Chris Hardwick, Tom Denenbroek, and others. About a year later, the speedcubing.com website was launched, and work on a new world championship started. Although originally intended to be held in 2001 in New York, it was delayed until 2003 in Toronto due to being unable to find a venue that would be suitable for the event. The World Championship came and went, and the new age of cubing was here. Over the next several months, one or two competitions came trickling in. It was clear that competitions were here to stay, and cubing wasn't going to die again. It was also clear that an organisation needed to be set up in order to make sure that everything would be fair at each competition. Otherwise, how could you make sure a record was set under the same conditions as another record? The first mention of a possible committee for world rankings came from Tyson Mao, on the 25th of April 2004. In a post to the Yahoo Speed Solving Group, he mentioned that the criteria Guinness World Records had was done without a true understanding of the hobby. For a long time they required that you use a brand new Rubik's brand cube out of the box, and that an organisation specifically for speed cubing would be much closer to the community. A lot of people liked the idea, and brainstorming began for the World Speed Cubing Union. Ron Van Brueckham, Chris Hardwick and Tyson Mao quickly came to the forefront as the minds behind this. On July 4th, 2004, one week before the first US Nationals competition, the rules were released. This is the earliest document known that has WCA regulations, and its age shows. In order to become a member of the WCA, you would have to pay exorbitant membership dues of a whole $5 a year. All records would have to be approved manually by at least two-thirds of the board members, and when solving the cube, there was originally no limit to what you could do to solve it, making it theoretically possible that a cube could be disassembled and reassembled in order to get a record. Over time, these issues were brought to light and gradually fixed. By the 2005 World Championship in Florida, the regulations have become quite similar to today's, and the WCA had a logo, still used to this day. By this time, more and more competitions were happening around the world, and the WCA was growing to meet the demand. In the past few years, the association has been restructuring itself to meet the growing demand. There are now many committees and teams within the WCA, all specialising in a particular area of the organisation, such as software, results, regulations, and communications. With the WCA Financial Committee being instated just recently, the goal of a true non-profit speed cubing union for the whole world is finally becoming reality. When this is finalised, Ron will finally step down from the board after 13 years of service. It's easy to look at the WCA and think that creating it can't have been difficult. After all, it's just an organisation for speed cubing, it doesn't look that hard. However, the amount of effort required to maintain such a large organisation is immense. Creating the WCA was a process that took years and many, many people to make it the organisation that it is today.